few weeks, our morning prayer videos are going to be a little bit different. As we are now getting towards the end of Lent, we are going to reflect on the story of Good Friday through the lens and experience of those who were there to witness it. After Jesus' crucifixion and death, the disciples were very afraid and they hid together in a house in Jerusalem, a little bit like all of us locked in our homes during lockdown. We are going to hear eight eyewitness accounts, which are going to come straight from here, our Lenten lockdown diary room. Lenten lockdown house, you are live. Please do not swear. I'm quite frankly done with this whole situation. The man's dead and this whole nightmare still isn't over. What is it with the Jews around the time of Passover? They go a bit crazy. I told my centurion he needed to put up the security. Even now, I put the man to death as the mob asked me to. And now they want 24 hour security around the tomb. It is dodgy disciples we need to be watching if you ask me. Who was this man anyway? I asked him quite a few questions, but he wasn't very forthcoming with answers. He said he was a king, but not of this world. Well, where then? Where is his kingdom? He also confused me talking about the truth. What is truth? I still don't know, but I do know that this was a man like no other. You know, my wife warned me about all of this. She said she had a dream about this man. Slightly worrying when your wife tells you she has dreams about another man. But I'll try and get over that. But actually, she was really shaken by the dream. It was a warning and she tried to tell me not to have anything to do with this man. Needless to say, I didn't really listen to her. It was so awful to hear them shouting. There were so many of them and they were so angry. I just couldn't understand why they wanted this Jesus dead. I asked them what was the charge, but they couldn't really accuse him of anything. I tried to set him free. I really wanted to. If this man was a king, then who was high to put him to death? But they just shouted louder and louder and louder. Crucify him, crucify him. I can still hear the mob. I, I couldn't sleep last night for the shouting in my head. They wanted Barabbas, a murderer. I told you these Jews go crazy at Passover. Eventually, I washed my hands of the whole thing. I wanted the mob settled and for the shouting to stop. I handed Jesus over to be crucified. As he left the praetorium, he looked directly at me. His gaze pierced me to my soul. But there was no anger there, no blame. He should have looked at me with hate and disgust, and yet there was love and forgiveness. I, I couldn't bear to look at him. My centurion returned to me hours later to confirm that Jesus was dead. And then a man named Joseph came and asked for his body and for permission to bury him. I said, yes, of course. The sooner all this business was over, the better. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus, our Saviour and Redeemer, as we reflect on your great sacrifice, walk with us on our journey through Lent. We give thanks for the cross and your gift of love and forgiveness. As we reflect on the events of Good Friday, may we place ourselves at the foot of the cross with the disciples, drawing close to you and your mercy. Help us to know your great love for us. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord and Saviour. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.